Welcome to Playing Above the Line, where we interview entrepreneurs, business owners, and community activists to get their thoughts and perspectives on leadership. Playing Above the Line is sponsored by Aviso Group, a business consulting and accounting firm focused on preparing clients for the future through innovation and positive growth. Now, see there, was that, that was not um, painful, <laughs> painful at all, was it? Not painful, not too painful. But Alan, there's some things I would love to have said about education that uh, that we that I try so hard to get through to students, and that is that teachers cannot educate. That only the student can educate through mm -hmm. lots of hard work and studying. And that's hour after hour, week after week, putting in the hard hours and the hard time. That's what your class did that made you successful. Well, you guys I were willing to put in the hard work and the long hours and to do what it took to be successful. And what my students want to do today, and, and it's not just mine, uh, we as professors talk about this a lot. And that is that students want it spoon, spoon fed to them, as we say, just tell me the answer, let me move on. I really have got other things to do. And there's so much multitasking going on. They're so distracted when they're trying to study and things of that nature. And, and they don't realize they need a space with no distractions, that they need space where their mind can truly concentrate on what they're doing without anything else going on around them. And, and instead, they sit with an iPhone and a computer and messaging and everything else, and it just hampers their brain. And that's, they don't understand how the brain functions. And I think if we could help them to understand um, how learning takes place. And the other thing I think we've done in education is we have taken the family out of education and therefore we have divorced children from their parents. Mm -hmm. And from uh, that's why we don't have family dinners anymore. That's why we don't, uh, because we have them in so many social activities. So everybody gets a prize and a trophy as we like to say, and everybody doesn't deserve a trophy. Sorry. Right. <laughs> Well, let me, and look, you were so right, but how much, and, and I've struggled with this, even with, with my kids. I mean, I, you know, I, I want them to be successful. And so sometimes I think that I maybe made things too easy on them and, and maybe tried to solve some problems for them that I probably shouldn't have. So I think some of what you're saying is, is maybe a parent issue is it's not necessarily it all a student issue. It's a parent issue because we're trying to say, look, I want to, go and, and mow down all these obstacles, you know, before you even have a chance to, to deal with them. But then when you get into the real world, I mean, life happens and, and nobody's there to tell you what to do and you don't know what to do. Right. Because right. your parents didn't let you figure it out. So. Well, and, and the, the way that children, I think even as five and six year olds is that you let them have a problem, see a problem and solve the problem for themselves instead of you what yeah, instead of you going in and solving it for them. Oh Johnny, don't you know that that pick up that red color and that's red right there. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, and then we want them to be popular. And so we get them and we want them to be well rounded, but at the same time we're not giving them any space to make their own decisions. And then when they get out of school and they're faced with making all of their own decisions. They don't really know how. Right. No, and sure. it's and it's partially not their fault. <laughs> no, I, I you're I totally agree with that. I mean, you're you know you're right, and I and I don't think that I'm mean, I, I wasn't you know we failed Madeline and I failed. I think it you know it 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 making them self sustainable you know to some extent, yeah. but it, but we also but I but I think we were aware of that. We tried to make them you know be able to. To work through some of those issues but i tell you man it's tough sure. it's tough it's hard to be a parent isn't it oh no doubt no doubt now so your daughter so your daughter's in florida 
Mm-hmm. She now, is. Do you, do you have any family out in Texas where you're going, or are you? Oh just yeah, going? I've got uh, my daughter that's deceased. Her two children are there, and my daughter that's in Florida, her uh, oldest daughter is there. Okay, and good. So I will actually be moving to San Antonio, close to her oldest daughter. And okay. uh, my daughter in Florida was a little bit miffed at me because she said, well, you could have moved to Florida, you know, where I am. And I said, well, I could have. But guess what, dear? I have no idea how long you'll be in Florida <laughs> until uh, the, the weather must hit yeah. you again. And the grandkids are in Texas. I mean, you know, so that's, that's right. That's... And, you know, they get priority. Sorry, kid. <laughs> <laughs> oh good good well i know that um so what did uh what did the folks at sanford tell you when you told them you were it was time to retire did they i mean were they they're I'm going sure they... uh <laughs> yeah. really yeah. <laughs> and it was so funny because my department chair goes well i thought you'd stay another year and and i think that they just they're not going to replace me right no, they now. can't replace you well, well, I mean, they're not going to fire anyone for the position because they actually are overstaffed right now. So in the accounting department by what we call uh, your normal load is three courses. And so we're overstaffed by one and a half courses. And uh, which means we have about half a faculty member too many. And the accounting program is actually has been decreasing in size, even though the School of Business has been increasing in size. And so, um, and as you know, Alan, I don't believe in making things, I don't wanna say making them easy because that would not be a true statement. I don't believe in making things uh, to where students don't feel challenged and have to study. And to oh, I know. <laughs> to give them to give them all the answers so they can just go study answers, you're not really helping them. I'm, and I'm, that's not education. And I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you my philosophy on education. I can't wait. <laughs> you have three stages in your life. Well, you actually have about four, but we're gonna talk about just three of them. You have from birth through high school. That is a full stage of life of dependency on your parents most of the time because you're living at home, you're, uh, you know, you're accountable to them, blah, blah. Your next stage of life is college. The third stage of your life is the work world. College is a bridge between Parents that dote over you, take care of you, tell you everything to do to a real world that tells you nothing except get it done. We don't care about your excuses. That's not our problem. If you don't like it, there's the door and we have someone else that can take your place. So college is in between those two. So we're the bridge. I told my students this semester, I said, if this university, and I told my department chair this, that I told them, if this university does not prepare you to grow up and mature in such a way that you can face the hard world when you graduate, you need to come back and demand your tuition back because that's our job is to prepare you for the tough world that you're going to face. And if we don't do that, we have done a huge disservice to our students. Well, uh, you're totally correct, but I can tell you that um, you are in the minority as far as oh, yes. educators at the college level who recognize that and who want to invest in the actual lives and the person of the student i mean mm-hmm. at auburn well you know and carrie knows i mean carrie went to auburn uh, she taught at auburn i mean it's they 
are there to teach you what's in that textbook and mm-hmm. they may not even know your name. I mean, you know, yep. uh, they just know. Oh, yeah, that, I taught them one of those very large universities. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, and, and so you're right. Uh, I totally agree with you, but I mean, I, and I wish more people had that, had that philosophy. They're in education, but they, they don't, I mean, higher education, uh, they just don't. And it's, and it's sad really. Well, the thing is, that's the reason I'm, I'm kind of tough on my students is because you know, I'm going, nobody's going to spoon feed you when you get out of here. Nobody is going to care if you make an A. You know, that isn't the way life grades. Life doesn't grade A through F. Life grades A and F. <laughs> That's how life grades, because you either make it or you fail. So there. And uh, I said, so, you know, it's, it is hard when you are fighting the establishment. And uh, believe me, I have fought the establishment for years. Oh, I remember some university of the, where I've been. Uh, I, know. I remember some of the stories that you told me that, you know, about some of your struggles doing what you wanted to do at Sanford. But the great thing about you is you just did it. That's right. They just dealt with it. Right. <laughs> I mean, that's so anyway, Carrie, you understand why I love this woman right here? <laughs> yes, this was wonderful. <laughs> Well, I love Alan. Alan and Rob, I'll tell you what, they were a pair. I got to tell you something about this class, though, Carrie, that we didn't tell. And that is, uh, there was, what, 12, 14 of you, something like that. Mm -hmm. Only two students out of that group did not pass the CPA exam on the first sitting. Wow. And those two, you would never believe the class they couldn't, that they had, I mean, the course they had a hard time passing and it wasn't an accounting course. (laughs) It was law. (laughs) It was business law. And they wore the the pavement out between here and Montgomery retaking B law, but they finally both passed it, you know, but they, and it's because I think that the students were really pushed and, and they really knew that not only did I care about their success in the professional world, I cared about their individual success as people in, uh, in their lives. And it, um, it takes a lot of energy to care. <laughs> well, and I think, right. And, and I think that's why a lot of people don't because I mean, think about the, wh- how you talked about what it takes just to publish in journals and to, you know, mm-hmm. progress and, and to receive tenure and to be promoted to, you know, professor and all those things. And then you add on top of that, trying to invest in the lives of your students, man. I mean, that's a, that's a big undertaking for sure. Well, but I do love my students, Alan. Uh, uh, yes. 10 four to that. <laughs> that. Well, I can tell you um, three of your students who are looking forward to dinner on Friday night. So we're uh, we're excited about. Uh, and I didn't. I don't know if you know this. Michael Wallace is going to be there with us. So you're kidding. Mm, yeah, oh, I called wow. him. I said, "Can you be in Birmingham at six thirty on Friday night?" And he said, "For what?" And I said, "Well, Doctor Guest is retiring. She's going to Texas. We got to take her to dinner." He was like, "He's like, I'm there." He said, "I don't even know what I got on my calendar." He was riding down the road in his truck. He said, "But I'll." I'm on, I'm going to be there. So, um, well, thank you. That's wonderful. I'll look forward to it. All right. I'll see you Friday. Okay. Bye, Alan. Bye bye. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you did, be sure to rate, review, and subscribe on iTunes and Spotify. It definitely helps us in the ratings and it also makes it easier for other folks to find the podcast. And as always, a big thank you to producer and editor Carrie Wolf. Playing Above the Line is sponsored by Aviso Group. If you want to know more about who we are and what we do, you can visit our website at avisogroup.com. That's A-V-I-Z-O group.com. You can also check us out on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Thanks for listening.